At this time, I know he's a uh, little pressed for time. I thank him for his patience. We'll uh, have our assemblyman, Mike Miller, come up. And uh, just so you know, Mike has uh, uh, contributed some pizza to the meeting, so please help yourself. And uh, that's the last pizza party. That's the last pizza party because, uh, again, we will be switching to Wednesday nights um, starting in March. Our next. Our next meeting is on, I know some, some folks are less than happy, but our next meeting is on, uh, of all nights, our next meeting is on St. Patty's Day. So, so if you come, uh, if you come down, uh, you know, wear, wear some green. And uh, in the meantime, over the summer time, Mike, Mike will be in Albany during that time. But he does uh, call in every Friday night. Uh, we have a, a, a radio show that goes on over the web. And he calls in and touches base with us, and he can take questions. You can call in and ask some questions. So, you know, talk to me if you're interested in that, and, and we'll be talking to him every Friday night. But that, we'll have to go off to our right. friend Mike. First of all, when I hear that music, I think we're good fellow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Mike Miller. I write the newsletter because there's a lot of good information in it about each and about license plate, the census, all the things that we're going to talk about. Census is very important. We have to make sure that we get our you know, services in the area that we need. So make sure everybody participates in the census. I wanted to mention that uh, this week I got an email from Glendale. And there were some people going around posing as uh, workers from the water board yeah. looking to inspect the meter, push their way in, and are the elderly person. So please. I'll share the information, let's be careful not let anybody in at all. You know, even if they have to come back, they're official, they'll come back. You know, let's be careful, we don't want to let anybody in. Um, the 56 and the Z train is uh, Yay, thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. It wasn't, it wasn't just me, uh, Eric Overton and Crowley and, and the dog were all there trying to, you know, get it saved. But, uh, you know, on the state level, I met with the NTA many times up in Albany. Uh, so, you know, it's safe, and let's hope that it stays that way, and we'll change it. As far as the student fairs, the state came up with, you know, our portion to save the student fairs. So that, that's done. We're just waiting for the city to, you know, work on their end, and I think that'll be safe. The next thing is the paratransit. I mean, that's, that's an important part of, you know, our society today. Our elderly people rely on it. It doesn't make sense when they pick them up from the house and drop them off the bus stop the other way for a bus stop. So you're still using the, the paratrims, they're still out there, why not just take them where they have to go? So we're working on that. Um, anyway, I enjoy you know, my role here, and I made, made a lot of friends here with Haven. You guys have been great. I, you know, of course I'll be up in Albany during the week, so I won't be at the meeting for a while, but Dory will, and or David, I don't know David, and if you have any problems, call our office. And yes, you know, every Friday night I call into the radio show. It's a great show. Um, they talk about a lot of things about what they do, but I get on and give a little, you know, history of what went on during the week. And uh, sometimes that has questions, and Vance texts a question, and, and do all this sneaky stuff, but uh, I get to answer it anyway. So, anyway, thank you for your help and support. Any questions about anything? Oh, we had the tax assessment. I uh, had two of them, one in Ridgewood, one in Ridgewood Hill. And uh, mostly everybody got their questions answered. Except for Rich, he had a tough question they couldn't answer. But uh, it was good, very informative about your uh, any abatements that you might have and, and, and discounts, senior citizen and veterans. Uh, so it was good. If you need information, call the office. We have uh, some information we can give out and send you about it. Any questions? Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as you remember at the, the meeting with the finance, I was in a bit of a disagreement as to what properties they were using. And it turned out that uh, I got the information. It seems that the properties they were using were properties that were sold in uh, October 2008. The property sold for $547,000. Now that same property was recently sold in 11, 2009, and the property sold for 260. So the thing is that you have to be very careful within the last three, six months,
property has been losing their value tremendously because the original sales, if you know how to look at these sheets, were actually illegal sales. There was something fraudulent about the original sales. So the thing is they inflated the original sales, so now when price is assigned to even out and come to reality, it's going to become very difficult for people to know whether or not their assessment is correct. And the problem is that the finance department was using these 2008 assessments in order to determine what your current tax is going to be. And I said to them, you're using old data, which it turned out they were. So the thing is that if you have gotten an increase in your assessment, you should look to the tax commission and raise an objection because they should look at it and see whether or not if they use the current information, you'll find that you shouldn't have gotten an increase in your assessment. There are limits, you know, that uh, your taxes could go up at 20% in uh, five years. So there's a lot of things about it. We have the information. We should send it out. Um, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, could you provide an update uh, regarding the situation with the aqueduct? Okay. Uh, well, you know, the governor chose uh, a vendor for aqueduct. And, uh, you know, I, I have to give some credit to Speaker Silva, who, you know, we weren't too happy about the vendor. And we put certain conditions on to make sure that we're protected, the people are protected. And one of them was about, you know, people having a criminal record and then having to come up with the money. And there's a whole, there's four or five different stipulations. Um, and I think now it's going to be investigated a little more further because, you know, the company AEG, although they may be fabulous at doing it, you know, we don't know until it happens. It's just the way the process, uh, how they were picked and Governor Patterson's relationship with the people in AEG. So it's still moving forward. There are conditions once they meet. Uh, you know, the work on the MOU, uh, the agreement that they, they all sign and all. But uh, I don't know if this is going to be the final event. I, I, don't, I don't know. Yes? So if they do not meet the vetting uh, process that's been set up by uh, the suburb and silver, then do we go, have to go back to the drawing board again? I, or will one of the others be, is a second person pick? I'm not sure of the process or, or how they, you know, they go about doing that. I am on the Racing Away Committee, uh, committee oh, so I will have, if it goes back to you know, the drawing board, I will have a process in it. And you, you just don't know because you know, the governor is one of the three people that make that decision. And if, it's not his original choice. You don't know how long he's going to take or what he's going to do. I'm not saying that he's going to do that. I'm just saying you know, you're not sure of the whole process. But meanwhile, losing a million dollars a day still. And job. There's a lot yeah. of jobs. All those jobs that we need to have for our community. You know, so the work, I know Senator Dabo. Senator Dabo and Assemblyman Pfeffer were right. part of the process from the beginning. Right. And I know that the last couple months, every week, they called or sent a letter to the governor getting them to get them to step up and make a decision. So I think, you know, putting a lot of pressure that way, that's how we had a decision come about, you know. So he got, he got him to move. I just don't know if that was the best choice. And then not, you know, although I'm on the racing wager committee, I only got on in January. So I was privy to the bidding process or you know, all the packages that were submitted. So I don't know which one would be best, so I can't give you that, you know, that answer or my opinion on it. But if it happens again, I will be a part of it, and I'll make sure that we 